So you should totally be boiling your mushrooms. Hear me out. Okay, so normally when I was cooking mushrooms, the way that I would do it is I would just clean the mushrooms. I would usually wipe them off with a damp paper towel, slice them up however I was gonna be serving them, whatever they were, and I would toss them into a dry pan, let them cook in the dry pan until a lot of the water was released. Uh, after a bit of them cooking, I would toss a little bit of salt on them, toss them around. Once all of that water is released, it's gonna kind of boil out in the pan. And I just toss in a little bit of olive oil and kind of like fry them up just a bit. And you end up with like a legitimately good mushroom this way. But then I started reading about boiling mushrooms and I guess it's pretty common. I know a lot of people do this, but you know what? I've never done it and I wanted to try it myself. So I wanted to test out just regular button mushrooms. I know you could do them with most grocery store mushrooms, uh, but I did want to see like I found some golden oysters and I also found the lion's mane. So we're going to try those as well. So the first up though is the button cap mushrooms. Now the button cap mushrooms, I just boiled them up, uh, threw in a pinch of salt and it took about 25 minutes for them to boil all the way down. Now I think the shorter time is because I have a wider saucepan and there's a lot more surface area for the water to evaporate away from. So I just added a pinch of oil to these and we're just gonna saute them up for just a moment like this and then and that's it. You end up with a really good mushroom. So here is the cooked dried mushroom and the boiled mushroom. And, and I'll be honest, they both look really good. Now let's see what Monica has to say, the difference between the two of them. So here's two mushrooms, try them and tell me which one's the best. So far, so good. This one wins. This one wins. The, yeah, this right one's here. really good. Mm -hmm. What do you think's the difference? I don't know, it's just more tender. It Can has you... more flavor. More, more flavor? Tender, yeah. So it's more tender and has more flavor. It's like, yeah, it's more rich for sure. So there you have it. I mean, it really was. I mean, the, the boiled ones definitely were richer in flavor. Uh, they were more tender. They were just, it was just a better cooked mushroom. I, I mean, really, this is, it's a it's a pretty decent method. Now, like I said, I also wanted to test lion's mane and some golden oysters. Now I treated both mushrooms exactly the same. I just prepped them how you would prep these mushrooms. So for the lion's mane, I just kind of peeled them on their natural like fiber, uh, cleaned off anything off of the back, any of the growing substrate for the golden oyster, I just trimmed them up and just cleaned them generally. Now we're going to treat these mushrooms the same as we did the button cap mushrooms. They're just going to go into the dry pan, covered with water, boiled, salted, uh, and, and then just let them boil out. Let that water completely boil out. Now the one thing that I do want to say, there is a little bit of a difference here. The lion's mane had a lot of liquid that boiled along with this. Uh, the lion's mane, I think because it's more of like a sponge and naturally has a lot of water, it took about 35 minutes to boil the lion's mane, where it was only about 25 minutes for the golden oysters. Now the golden oysters actually while it was boiling it boiled in kind of like a clear broth there wasn't a whole lot of like mushroom juice that kind of boiled away that's one of the aspects of this that i believe is what gives the boiled mushrooms a little bit more flavor is um it's actually kind of creating this like broth and then cooking it down inside of its own inside of its own juices the lion's mane and the button cap both had kind of like a brown broth that they boiled in now i want to try them out and i also want to see what monica has to say about both of these but first so hey gang real quick a lot of you probably don't know this but i was a heavy smoker for over 18 years sometimes two packs a day when I quit, it was really hard, but Monica was the source of my inspiration. For me, the nicotine wasn't that hard to break, but it was the habits that surrounded smoking. But that's why I wanted to tell you about today's sponsor, Fume. Fume is the natural inhaler designed for a better, safer, and natural way to quit cigarettes. It's a no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine replacement for the hand to mouth habit of smoking. Fume handcrafts these wooden inhalers and uses cores that are infused with plant oils that are studied to curb cravings. They have all these different flavors like peppermint and concour with minty notes to simulate menthol cigarettes and other flavors like cozy chai and lemonberry bliss for a sweeter experience. And all their flavors are 100% natural. No harmful chemicals, no artificial flavors, and absolutely no nicotine. I gave a fume to one of my really good friends that was a really heavy smoker and they've told me that they've just really enjoyed having this and it's helped them curb their cravings quite a bit. So whether you're a smoker or ex-smoker who's still struggling with cravings, fume is going to be the right tool for you. Head over to breathefume.com com slash sauce stash and use code sauce stash to save 10% off your entire order. That's 10% off your entire order when you head over to B-R-E-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash sauce stash and use code sauce stash. Fume, thanks for sponsoring today's video and providing people with an incredible way to quit smoking. If, if, you're, if you're struggling with quitting smoking or if you're even considering quitting smoking, please give this a try.
Now, I was doing a little bit of research on why this might work and why these mushrooms come out the way that they do. Now, I found an article on Cooks Illustrated that I'll leave a link below that explains this a lot better, but essentially their takeaway is, is you can't overcook mushrooms. And according to an article on Evening Standard, there's a bunch of professional chefs that believe mushrooms are meant to be boiled. Specifically, the co-founder of Fable Foods, Jim Bob Fuller. He wrote that he does it all the time and he's actually gotten a lot of dirty looks. So this makes me feel a lot better that the boiling technique might be a go-to idea for a lot of my mushrooms. So first up on the tasting experience is the lion's mane. Are they like the lion's mane I've cooked in the past? They're a little different. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. They're definitely richer and more savory. Lots of flavor bursting and juicy. They're oh, juicy. yeah. I mean, really, it's, it's kind of a big difference, right? Yeah. The boiling just produces a richer flavored mushroom. Now, I've made a lot of lion's mane in the past. I make it pretty often, and I've used it a lot in different videos. Uh, and I've never actually seen it cook like this. Usually, lion's mane browns up more like a steak, but this kind of browned up like a mushroom. So that was a cool experience. Baby, give this one a try. Mm. It's the best on oysters. Mmm, I really like this. Wild, right? But yeah, realistically, this is the way I'm gonna cook mushrooms from now on. Me too. For most things. Mm -hmm. Go it's crazy. really good. I'm gonna go yeah. crazy with this. Go crazy with it. So really, there it is. The golden oyster mushrooms, and I, I'm gonna assume most of these oyster mushrooms that are they're similar and like the similar type of body, they're gonna go. They're gonna boil really well. Uh, there's gonna be a ton of flavor with them, and I think they're just like they're one of the perfect mushrooms to actually boil. Lion's mane might not have been like the best choice, but really, it ended up working out. Like I think most people probably would have thought that it wouldn't have been a good boiled mushroom, but I, I ended up thinking it was just fan fantastic.